Well, I guess sometimes I'm just too fast for my own good. Um, but I'll make you a little video here and just tell you how to do this. I'm sorry I'm not going to show you, but you guys that follow my channel, you'll be used to this by now. Had to replace a breaker in our breaker box this afternoon. I don't think it was rain induced. I thought it was. My wife called me and she said, yeah, the breakers look like they're wet. Which our breaker box is on the back deck. It's a covered, you know, we've got a covered porch, but um, it's real common down here in, in Houston area anyway that I've seen have external breaker boxes. So I don't think it was because they were wet. I think the thing just went out. It was this old, it's some sort of, it's like a GFCI breaker. So see, it's got a ground wire on it in addition to just the standard power wire. So I think probably just like GFCI, let's see, just kind of go out after a while. But anyway, on this particular breaker panel, uh, this is a GE breaker. There are a couple different mounting types of breakers, and I don't know what they are offhand, but this one just uh, clips in and then snaps in. So most important, obviously, when you're replacing a breaker on your house, is the first thing you need to do is kill your main. So for me up here, this is my main. It is a uh, 150 amp breaker. And so you should come in here, obviously if you have anything in the house that you're worried about somehow getting a power surge, uh, you can turn it off or unplug it, but really just throw your main, it's just like the power going out. So it's not that big of a deal. So throw the main off, <clears throat> everything is instantly dead. Come in here, there's no screws or bolts or anything. You just pull right here. <laughs> it made a buzzing sound, it scared me. Um, right here, not, the, not on the breaker switch itself, but on the body of the breaker, pull it that direction kind of pull out to you and pull to the right and it will snap loose from the main power bar and then there's just a little hook on the back side you see on this breaker here um, there's just this little kind of hook in the body that sets on a different bar that holds it in place so this thing mounts in so you just like this so you pull it out to you it hinges and then you can slide it out and then once you do then of course you can just take just a flat head this is a flat or a square drive but a flathead screwdriver Loosen your screw, your positive lead's gonna come out. And again, in this case, I had a positive and a neutral. Um, but let's assume that you don't have the GFCI, you just have a standard positive uh, one way breaker. You see, it's only got one terminal on there. So pull it out to you, loosen your screw, pull the breaker off the wire, grab your new breaker, wire in, tighten the screw, snap, snap, goes right back in. Boom, you're done. Flip your main back on, you're done. This literally took me about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. I think it was a minute because it threw me off that it was a that it was that GFCI sort of breaker. I wasn't expecting that. I was just expecting the one wire and then I found two. But it's okay. Um, that was just an extra little added bonus um, to have a GFCI breaker. It probably has actual GFCI list downstream as well, so it's really overkill. Um, and I don't think it's it's obviously not a code thing because they're not all GFCI breakers, so just overkill. But anyway. Super quick and simple, something you can absolutely do yourself. And the, the issue was, just so y'all know, the breaker had flipped. I came in here, flip it back, and it wouldn't stay. It wouldn't stay flipped. And so it's just like, it's just like with a GFCI outlet. If you, if it stops working, and you try to hit the reset button, and it just won't reset. They just have a, you know, an internal breaker issue that just over time it just wears out and it fails, and you just have to replace it. So uh, super quick and easy, not that difficult to do. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say about it.